Hello everyone, this short course is all about solar power and I will be teaching you how to design your own solar power system. If you are a hobbyist or someone who just wants to DIY stuff, someone who wants to know more about to know more about solar power systems or um, just wanted to know if he or she has been told the right equipment for a solar power set setup then this lecture series is for you this lecture series is divided into five parts part one will be the introduction to powers to solar power system in part two we'll talk about the different solar power system setups such as on-grid off-grid and hybrid systems parts three four and five will the most important parts of these lectures of this lecture series as we will do some calculations in order to design and build our own on-grid off-grid and hybrid solar power systems and so we begin solar power system basic design and calculations part 105 introduction how much power is in the sun? Well, according to UTIA's website, the sun releases an estimated 3.846 times 10 to the 26th power watts of energy. That is 3846 followed by 23 zeros. So compare that to a to a bulb and an incandescent bulb which uses only 60 watts of power or 100 watts so that's quite a lot of power yeah, that's in the sun at the earth's surface the solar energy density is approximately around 1000 watts per square meter so imagine this if you have a roof area of about 50 square meters and um, four hours of sun exposure the amount of energy received by your roof is around 200,000 watts or 200 kilowatts sorry uh, for an average household this is already equivalent to half of your monthly power consumption harvested in just a few hours but please know that this uh, in this example we have not factored in the efficiency of our solar panels to convert solar energy to electrical energy the efficiency would be around 15 to 15 percent to 20 percent the world currently consumes around 15 terawatts of power so that's around 15 and followed by 12 zeros <clears throat> to put into perspective a one terawatt um, one terawatt would be equivalent to 10 billion incandescent bulbs rated at 100 watts each According to a study done in 2017, crude oil is still the primary source of energy used by the world's population, followed by coal, that's the, um, the line, line in blue. and coal then natural gas that would be the orange line then followed by traditional biofuels that's the one in red the renewable energy sources are down here these are the wind power solar so you can see that our renewable are still far behind or traditional um, sources of power 
So to have a clear view of the amount of gap between the crude oil and our solar power, that's this one. Crude oil is this, green line. Solar would be this, blue line down here. You can really see the big gap here. How big really is the potential of solar energy in solving the world's energy problem? So just look at this picture. The world energy consumption is the one in the middle at 16 terawatts. This one. Well, no, let me just... Yeah, 16 terawatts. Uh, the wind power, potential of wind power, it can provide around 25 to 70 terawatts of power. The solar on the other hand, well the traditional sources of power would be the coal, uranium, oil, natural gas. These are the non-renewable traditional powers, traditional sources of power. Um, renewable, the renewables are here. And the solar power would be this one big yellow, one big yellow uh, se semicircle here. So we can clearly see that um, the solar power, on the other hand, would, will have the have has a potential of producing around twenty three thousand terawatts of power. So that's really quite a huge amount compared to the um consumption to our consumption which is only 16 terawatts so why do we need to switch to solar well number one as you can clearly see in the photo solar power has the potential to meet and even exceed the world's energy requirement number two it is unlimited as long as our sun is shining Number three, it is safe. Number four, uh, it's a clean energy. Number five is basically free. And number six, it doesn't cost much to maintain. So in the previous slide, we have seen the advantages of using solar power now we'll see the disadvantages of using solar power first thing is um, it has a high initial cost yes you'll probably spend a large sum of money for a new installation for a new installation but it will eventually pay you back slowly through the years in the US, the average ROI or return of investment for a solar power system is around 8 years. But we also would like to, to point out that the lifespan of a solar panel is around 20 years, with some reportedly to be still in operation after 30 years. Number two, um, solar power is dependent on the weather. So there will be times when the sky is covered with clouds and so the harvested solar power is decreased significantly or during winter time where there's really not much sun. Number three, solar energy storage is expensive. The lifespan of a battery is also short and will need to be replaced every three to five years. That that figure is true for um, lead acid batteries. So. With the advancement of technology, advancement of 
solar panels and batteries we expect the price of building a solar power system to go down so through the years we have seen um, their prices fall and they will still continue to fall in the future as companies find ways to lower the cost of production um, increase production efficiency and discover and the discovery of new technologies how do solar panels convert solar energy to electrical energy simply put this put it this way let's put this put this way um, when a photon of sunlight knocks knocks on an electron free it creates enough potential to allow the electrons to flow thus a current is created there are basically two types of solar panel used in home installations the monocrystalline that's the one in the left and the polycrystalline panels that's the one in uh, the right and there are there are other other types as well such as uh, thin film which will not, we will not discuss here so for some the monocrystalline panel is, is the panel of choice as it has higher efficiency which is around 15 percent to 20 percent compared to the polycrystalline panel which is in the range of 14 percent to 16 percent because of this the mono panels are more expensive than the poly panels but um, due to the advancement in solar pa sol solar panel technology you can now see some poly panels polycrystalline panels that can match the efficiency of the monocrystalline panels and also one distinct one distinct difference between the mono, mono and polycrystalline panels is that mono panels are darker in shade uh, some kind of black and the polycrystalline panel is lighter some kind of a uh, bluish bluish in color in installing a solar power system you don't just need a solar panel we also need other equipment such as um, inverter uh, the inverter converts DC output of the solar panels to AC to be used by the common home appliances we also have the solar charger um, solar charger and a battery bank the solar charger uh, mani manages the charging of the battery bank it controls the rate at which the batteries are charged and prevents overcharging the battery basically is just uh, an energy storage and lastly we will also need um, cables connectors mounting brackets breakers and other safety devices such as uh, um, surge protection devices so that's the end of the first part of this lecture series and I hope that you have learned something I hope to see you in the next part as we will discuss the different types of solar power setups such as on-grid, off-grid and hybrid systems thank you and have a nice day